Hi, my name is Gurumurthy Ramachandran, and we are continuing our discussion of uncertainties in physical measurements. In this section, we'll be discussing the measures of measurement uncertainty. How do we express measurement uncertainty? The first way to describe measurement uncertainty is using this parameter called the coefficient of variation. So the coefficient of variation, CV, is expressed as the ratio of the standard deviation to the mean. So CV is just sigma divided by mu, and it is also called as the relative standard deviation. So if now a measurement procedure consists of two steps, a sampling step followed by an analytical step in the laboratory, then the total coefficient of variation CV is the CV of the sampling step and the CV of the analytical step. And so our formula, therefore, is the total coefficient of variation CV sub T is equal to CVS squared plus CVA square A standing for analytical, and you take the square root of that whole thing. And so that's the total standard deviation divided by mu. So in this case, CVS is the coefficient of variation of the sampling step, and CVA is the coefficient of variation of the analytical step. Another way to describe measurements is using uh, what is known as measurement method accuracy. And the International Standards Organization, ISO, defines accuracy as the closeness of the agreement between the result of a measurement and the true value of the measurement. And so let us assume that the true value of the concentration is C, and the bias in the measurement method is B, and the relative standard deviation of the measurement method is the CV, coefficient of variation total, T. If the mean concentration observed using the method is C, lowercase c, then the bias, capital B, is given by lowercase c minus capital C, which is the true concentration, divided by the true concentration C. And so this is the bias. Now in the context of a Gaussian distribution of errors, the overall measurement uncertainty can be defined as sigma overall, and this is equal to the bias B squared plus the coefficient of variation total squared, and you take the square root of these two terms. And once we have defined the sigma overall, we can then define an overall accuracy as A, 95%, meaning 95% accuracy, as 1.96 times sigma overall. This 1.96 comes from our discussion of the normal distribution, where we are saying that between mu minus 1.96 sigma to mu plus 1.96 sigma, we have 95% of the area under the curve. And so this in turn reduces to A, 95% accuracy, is equal to 1.96 times the square root of B squared plus CV total squared. One other parameter that describes measurements is called the limit of detection. The limit of detection, or LOD, for a particular measurement method is the value of the measurement, uh, for example, the concentration or mass of an analyte, that is used as a cutoff point for asserting the presence of an analyte. So, for example, if the limit of detection of a particular chemical were one part per million, then we basically say that anything less than one part per million is indistinguishable from zero. If our measurement method uh, has a limit of detection of one part per million, then anything below that is as if the analyte did not exist. It's only above a value of one part per million that we can say that we have something there that is statistically distinguishable from zero. Below that, it is indistinguishable from zero. So you could have zero or 0.5 or 0.7. They are all equal to zero as far as the measurement method is considered. So let the imprecision in our measurement method be given by sigma, and uh, this is independent of the concentration. So let the false positive rate in asserting the presence of an analyte be alpha. Thus, only a fraction alpha of the measurements exceed the LOD if the true mass sampled is zero. So for example, uh, if you can imagine the normal bell-shaped curve and the midpoint is zero, so that's the true value, but the normal distribution extends in both directions. 
and if we especially just look at the positive direction and we say that the LOD is some value along the x-axis and the area under the curve above the LOD is alpha, then even though the true value is zero, because that's the center point of the distribution, a fraction alpha of the time, we are saying that in fact, there is uh, something where in fact there is nothing. So it's a false positive. In other words, when a measurement exceeds the LOD, this indicates the true presence of mass with a false positive rate of alpha. So if you have a false positive rate of alpha, then the limit of detection is given by the inverse of this Gaussian probability density function, one minus alpha of this inverse times sigma. And so you can say, well, what makes sense for us? So if we say that the false positive rate is set at 0.1% or 0.001, then the inverse of this normal distribution function, so what is the area under the curve? If the area under the curve above the LOD is 0.1%, then the Z corresponding to that is three. So for an LOD of three times the standard deviation, the false positive rate is about 0.1%. So in order to determine the limit of detection, we need an estimate of the imprecision in the measurement method. And we have already shown that the standard deviation is a good measure of the imprecision and it's independent of the concentration. And so we can calculate the standard deviation of these measurements and uh, denote that by S. And three times that standard deviation is the limit of detection. Practically speaking, if we were to make measurements of dust concentration and we are going to weigh the mass on a filter, then the easiest way to determine the standard deviation is to say we collect a bunch of blank filters, meaning filters on which no dust has been collected. And so this is corresponding to zero mass, the zero concentration of the bell-shaped curve. And we measure these individual blank filters repeatedly, and they will form a bell-shaped curve, and we find the standard deviation of those measurements. And so that is our standard deviation S, and three times that standard deviation is our limit of detection. And yet another parameter is called the limit of quantitation. So you recall that the limit of detection is a value above which we say that we've got something, and below that, we say we haven't got anything. It's indistinguishable from zero. But the limit of quantitation for a measurement method is the limiting value for providing a number, for quantifying a measurement such as a concentration or a mass with some degree of confidence. So it's the cutoff value for asserting that the relative imprecision is tighter than a specified value. And so it's defined as the sigma divided by the coefficient of variation that the maximum relative error acceptable in a quantification. So for example, if sigma for a set of, for a measurement method were known to be 10 part per million and the coefficient of variation is known to be 10%, then the limit of quantitation is 100 parts per million using this formula. So what it means is that the limit of quantitation is 10 times the standard deviation in this example. Previously, we had said that the limit of detection was three times the standard deviation. So what we are trying to say is that we go up to three times the standard deviation before we can say, yes, we have something, but we cannot actually quantify it. We have to go to 10 times the standard deviation before we can say, yes, we have got something, and we can actually quantify it with some degree of accuracy.